Hello Raquel and Richard, this is your 300 diesel. I just wanted to show you that the engine air filter is really dirty and should be replaced. Um, typically when the air filter turns black like this, they should be replaced. Filters generally last 15,000 miles. This is what yours looks like. This is what a new one looks like. There's a big difference, so I recommend changing your engine air filter. The next thing I'm going to show you is that these, uh, this battery you have in your car is actually too small uh, of a battery for the car. You can see the battery tray is uh, larger than the battery and the reason for that is is because this battery is actually undersized for this engine. Um, you should have a larger style battery. This is a ten and a half inch battery and the battery it should be is about thirteen inches and that's the battery right there. So um, this is going to be a problem uh, in cold weather. This battery will uh, probably not give you enough cold cranking amperage to get this car started when it's really cold outside and if you're going up north and if it's really cold one day you may not be able to start the car or the battery won't have enough power to start the car. Uh, so this is why it's important that you replace this battery with the correct size, larger size, 13 inch longer battery. We, I'll give you a price to replace uh, the battery with either a Mercedes unit or an interstate unit. The next thing we're going to show you is that the brake fluid in the brake fluid reservoir is really dirty. Brake fluid is typically uh, an amber yellow transparent color and the brake fluid in your reservoir is dark brown which indicates the brake fluid in your brake system is very dirty and should be flushed out. Uh, we should bleed all, all four wheels and put new brake fluid in the brake reservoir to ensure high quality braking uh, when you depend upon it, um, especially on, in mountain areas so that your, your brake pedal will not fade. The next thing we're going to show you is that the uh, power steering reservoir is really low on oil and uh, we're going to lift up the car and show you why the power steering reservoir is, is low. So we're going under the car and I'm showing you where the power steering leak is. And the power steering leak is actually right here at the power steering gearbox. This is the gearbox right here. And the gearbox is actually leaking all along the bottom of the gearbox, but you also have a leak coming from this uh, power steering hose. Uh, the low pressure power steering hose is actually leaking oil as well. So what I would recommend that we do first is change this power steering hose, low pressure hose, and see if, if maybe the power steering uh, hose was causing all this oil to go to the bottom of the uh, power steering gearbox. Uh, we'll just wipe everything down, start the car, drive it a little bit, and see if the gearbox still leaks. The next thing we're going to show you is that this transmission cooler hose right here. This hose is original, it's never been replaced and it's starting to crack. Um, this is the left side and the one on the right side is actually starting to leak. You can see it right here, this hose right here is all wet. So if we're going to do one, we should do the other side. But both the left and the right side transmission cooler hoses are original. They've never been replaced and we should upgrade them to some hoses that actually have some steel bands around them so if that the fan belts would break they wouldn't break these hoses. Um, that's what I recommend. The next thing we're going to show you is that the lower control arm ball joints, the boots on the ball joint are bad and this is why the front suspension squeaks so much. This ball joint is supposed to have a boot right here and all the, uh, the boots deteriorated and it's disappeared and now all the grease that was in this ball joint is gone and the front suspension squeaks like an old bed especially when you go over bumps and this is the reason why you have the squeaking. This is the right side of the right front wheel. This is the lower control arm ball joint and the one on the opposite side is also the same way. It's missing a boot right here. So this is why your front suspension creaks and this is why we're recommending front lower ball joints. The next thing we're gonna recommend are the tires. The tires should be replaced before you take this long trip. Um, the tires are date stamped right here. You can see the date stamp. It says 39 of 03. So these tires, all four tires, are 2003 tires and they were man manufactured on the 39th week of 2003. Once a tire is more than five years old, they have a tendency to dry rot and you can see all the dry rot, the cracks that are on the side of the tire as well as on the tread. So all four tires are this way and it's not safe to take this car on a cross country trip for this reason. These tires can go flat at any time and you could get stuck. Um, because of the tires. So I recommend changing all four tires on this car. The next thing we're going to recommend are the muffler donuts. The muffler donuts are missing on this exhaust and it looks like somebody put some uh, basically some some wire here to keep the exhaust from falling down. But you really should have some muffler donut, donuts holding this exhaust up and they're apparently all broken except for one here. One is, well actually one is broken. 
but this is the remaining muffler donut. This is what it would look like if, uh, if you had it on there. It wouldn't be broken, but it would be holding the exhaust up. All, all that's holding this exhaust system up is that one wire. So I recommend replacing uh, the muffler donuts that are missing. The next thing I want to show you is that the fuel tank hose. The fuel tank hose is wet and it's leaking fuel all over the back of the car. This is the fuel tank hose right here and uh, it's, it's plugged directly underneath the fuel tank and all this fuel is leaking in this area where the right right before the trunk uh, trunk spare tire is and this is the trunk spare tire and this as you can see is wet as well so this is this is to be um, cleaned up and so does this rear sway bar it's all wet from this this one fuel hose leaking so I recommend changing the fuel tank hose over here we have the exhaust system and what's happening is there's an exhaust noise coming from the exhaust because the uh, exhaust flange has an exhaust leak right where the manifold meets the front exhaust pipe uh, there is a, a little seal here a ceramic seal that goes bad and when it goes bad it leaves black soot behind um, so this is what we're seeing right here is you have some black soot from an exhaust leak at, right at the flange so we need to um, open this up and replace the seal that goes in here it's like a gasket and that'll prevent the exhaust from making noise there is a noise coming from the exhaust and this is what it is the next thing I'm showing you here is the uh, right upper control arm the control arm um, ball joint boot is actually bad right here the boot is separating and eventually what will happen is the grease uh, will escape from here and cause the upper control arms to squeak when you go over bumps but the upper control arm will need, this right upper control arm will need to be replaced uh, real soon because like I said the boots coming apart and separating and all the grease is starting to come out of it. This is the right side and I'm going to show you the left side now. This is the left side upper control arm and you can see the ball joint boot on this is starting to separate and eventually this left side upper control arm will start to squeak as well when all the grease comes out of it. Just like the lower ball joints are squeaking now. Okay, the next thing I'm going to show you is that the car has a fuel leak coming from the bottom of the uh, fuel injection fuel pump and the fuel pump right there I don't know if you can see it but there's a, a little fuel leak right there where the uh, red LED is pointing at there's a fuel leak coming from the fuel injection pump and um, it, it's not the pump itself but the fuel pump for the fuel injection pump is leaking and it's it's really wet here with diesel fuel so I recommend um, we can try and replace the gasket for the fuel injection fuel pump and also changing the fuel primer Pump, which is a little bit above that the fuel primer pump uh, also could be leaking and we're going to replace both the gasket for the fuel pump and the fuel hand primer pump the next thing we're going to show you is that the uh, fan belts are starting to crack and this is the uh, alternator belt the alternator belt has cracks in it and so does this AC belt right here the AC belt also has cracks as well as the power steering belt. So I'm, re I'm recommending that you change all three belts for this long trip that you're going to take across the country. The next thing we're going to show you is that we did a coolant sample test on your coolant. And I was going to show you here on this test strip that we have that the pH level is actually in the, in the fail area. It's, the pH level is 11%. And the alkaline right here is, is also not in a passing grade, it's at uh, 3.2. And that the temperature protection, which is the pink, the far left pink uh, temperature protection of your coolant is very low. So right now, what you have in your cooling system is basically just essentially water. And we're recommending that you flush your cooling system and put solid uh, antifreeze in there. We're going to put Mercedes yellow antifreeze, which is a clear antifreeze. And that's the antifreeze I'm recommending that you put in this car before you go on your long trip. The next thing I'm going to show you is that the uh, rear trunk or rear area of the car, the antenna seal is missing. This is not good because if it rains or if you get your car washed, you're going to get a lot of water in your trunk uh, because the antenna seal is missing. I recommend putting an antenna seal here so that water does not get inside the trunk. Right now we have the uh, rear lights on and you can see that this light is lighting up. This light is the parking light is lighting up. This parking light is lighting up, but the one over here on the corner doesn't work, so we got to replace this parking light bulb. Another thing I want to point out to you is that the odometer doesn't work and the trip odometer doesn't work. So uh, when I drove the car, this this uh, this mileage dial wasn't moving at all, and neither was this one. So the, the odometer is something you should get fixed if you want to know how many miles you've driven between oil changes.